The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If it feels to you like we just heard this gospel last Sunday, the answer is no, you didn't. Last Sunday, you heard the story of the calling of the disciples, the early disciples, from John's gospel. Today, we're back in Mark. And remember, this year, in the church year, we're reading Mark's gospel. Mark's gospel is the shortest of the four, uh, so they intersperse a lot of John's gospel throughout this year of our readings. So last week, we heard from John's gospel about the calling of uh, Andrew and Peter and Nathaniel and Philip. Today, we hear about the calling of Peter and Andrew, brothers, and James and John, brothers, both sons of the man known as Zebedee. A little bit about this background. This is early in the time of Jesus' ministry there in Mark's gospel. He's been baptized, and he's already done the 40-day fast thing, and now he's uh, beginning his earthly ministry. So roughly, Jesus is about 30 years old here. And in this particular case, he goes out calling his first disciples. The word that you heard there was said twice, and immediately they left their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father. And the story today is about the calling of those disciples. And if you look a little bit carefully at the first lesson we read today from Jonah, it also is a story about calling. Now, that's from the Old Testament. The book of Jonah is a very short book. It's only four chapters long. You can read it in about 15 minutes. But if you read through it, it's filled with all kinds of wonder and excitement and uh, fun and fascinating details. If you go back into your old Sunday school days, you'll probably remember the story of Jonah. He's called by God to go to Nineveh. And what does Jonah do? He goes down to the Mediterranean Sea, the town called Joppa, right on the port. And he decides to sail west to Tarshish which is on what we now know of as Spain. In other words, he was heading exactly the opposite direction of Nineveh. When God called, Jonah said, no thank you, God, I'm going the other way. And you know the rest of the story. You know, as he got into the boat, he got in the boat and began to sail, got out there, and God brought a great big storm. And yeah, God brought a great big fish. And Jonah told the sailors who were petrified and terrified, throw me over and the winds will cease. And so they decide to do so. They throw them, hurl them off the ship, and immediately, there's that word, immediately a great fish, we're not told a whale, basically we are told a great fish came and swallowed Jonah, and Jonah lived in that be the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Yuck, can you just imagine? After three days and three nights, we're told that the whale decided to, um, shall I say, regurgitate uh, Jonah out on the beach. And that's when we hear the story we heard today, because it says this, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, get up and go to Nineveh. The first time, he didn't listen to God's call, but the second time, he decided to do it. So he gets up and he goes to Nineveh. Now, again, now he's going east. 
to Nineveh, which is a long way away from where he was there in Joppa, some 12 to 1300 miles away. So he goes to Nineveh and he proclaims a very simple message. 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's a simple message. And apparently everybody in Nineveh believed God. It says all the way from the greatest to the least could be all the way from the king down to every one of his servants. They all put on sackcloth. They all covered themselves with ashes. They repented. And then God decided not to bring the calamity that God had intended to do. All filled with all kinds of excitement. But believe it or not, Jonah doesn't end there. Jonah had a successful ministry. The entire city turned around and repented. And what did, what did Jonah do? The part we didn't read today. He goes out and he watches from a distance the city of Nineveh to see what God, how God was going to strike the people of Nineveh. And God didn't do it. And what did he do? What did Jonah do? He simply said, Woe is me, for I am undone. It's better if I had never even been born. What's going on with Jonah? What's going on with this man? Talk about resistance. Well, two examples of God's call. One you hear in the story of Jonah, where Jonah is called twice. Once totally resisted God's call and went the other direction. The second time, he decides to go obey God's voice and do what God asked him to do and go, and the people of Nineveh repent. The second calling is in today's gospel story. And it's the one with Jesus calling his early disciples. As he uses the word immediately there, the word immediately actually in Mark's gospel is used more than anywhere else in the Bible. Mark describes Jesus or pictures Jesus as a man of action as opposed to the other gospels. Matthew and Luke and John all kind of speak of Jesus as a fulfillment of the Messiah, the biblical images, or talking about the teachings of the kingdom of God. But in Mark's gospel, he's a man of action, a man of immediacy. And here in Mark's gospel, the word immediately is used 40 times, meaning without delay, at once, immediately, they responded. Now, there's two sets of brothers here. Both are called. Both respond immediately. Andrew and Peter, who are on the side, apparently they didn't have enough money for the boat. Apparently they did come from a particularly poor family. There was no mention of a boat at all. They were from the seaside casting their nets, which everyone knows is not where you catch the best fish. So they cast their nets and they haul them in. And finally Jesus uses their wisdom, what they did for a living, and said, look, right now you're fishing for fish. I'm going to have you fish for people. And immediately, they got up, straightway, to use the old King James English, without delay, they got up and they left their nets. The other two were the sons of Zebedee. And poor Zebedee, his children, up and leave him. We often kind of look at this story and think these two sets of brothers, because they immediately responded, somehow, maybe just a tinge of irresponsibility. I mean, they're leaving their dad with the work. They're leaving the, with the workers, everything behind, to follow this man, Jesus. We look at these uh, four men, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, and their immediate response to that call, and we think, gosh, we look up to them as pinnacles of the faith. But what if it's deeper than that? What if the real story is about a miracle there of God's call? I think it's as much of a miracle as God's call to Jonah. Jonah at first put up resistance, and many people do. When, when God calls them to do something, immediately they think, eh, I'm not going to do that. No interest. I have better things to do with my time. I have my family to care for, God. I'm not going to go that way. Just like Jonah. Eventually, God's call is persistent. In today's gospel, you hear the story of the call of God, and there seems to be no resistance at all. So the question I have for you today is, have you ever felt somehow God calling to you to do something different, something extraordinary, that you just sort of say, no, I don't have the time, 
I don't have the uh, inclination. I don't have the gifts. I've been there, done that kind of thing. You know, I'll let somebody else. We need to have young blood, that kind of, we need to have somebody younger take over those reins now. Those are the kind of th responses that we usually get from God's call. When God calls us to do something extraordinary, it's often a mixture of force and resistance, pushing back against God's call. Neither is rebuked, did you notice? Those who immediately respond and those who put up a lot of resistance. The key here is that God continues to call. Maybe we should call it more like a nudge. God nudging us along. Yesterday, Anne and I did a little midwinter hike down at the Reinstein uh, Nature Preserve, and it was cold. It was really cold, but we were walking around there and uh, just taking pictures and taking in the beauty of the place. I was looking around trying to see if there was any wildlife, didn't see any deer, didn't see any raccoons, though we saw lots of tracks there in the snow. And then we heard a little bird. It was a chickadee. I thought all birds had flown south for the winter, but here was this little chickadee. Apparently, this little chickadee had a family. We saw little, little ones down toward the ground. But this one chickadee came right up to us, stood about as close as my face to my hand, wanted to talk to us. Why that bird? Why that chickadee? It just had so much to say, and it kept talking, and I didn't understand of a word that bird was saying, and I'm sure uh, that bird didn't understand anything that Ann and I were saying to it. But boy, did we have much to say. And we just stayed and talked and listened to each other. Was that God calling? Who's to say? What I'm trying to show you in last week's gospel and this week's gospel is that God's call is persistent. God has a way of reaching us through voices we don't even expect. Maybe you've heard something this week that kind of just stuck in your ear. A voice, a word of wisdom from a place you didn't expect at all. And you say, was that the voice of God? Last week, I was encouraging you to think about that this week. Listen for those voices that have something to say to you, something so profound and moving. Maybe it's just simply the chirp of a bird that you may not understand, but you sure do reflect on that one bird. What is it that's going on that's calling you right now to something simple, something extraordinary, something profound, something ordinary? What voices are you listening to right now? It could be the voice of God. Listen attentively. Amen.